Hey, this is Sandy. And Randy. And we're here on AT Corner. Being an athletic trainer comes with ups and downs, and we're here to showcase them all. Join us as we share our world in sports medicine. Welcome back to another episode of AT Corner. We're coming off National Athletic Training Month with a story episode. And this one's about pet peeves. As we all know, athletic trainers are very picky about how things are done in general and how they like things, and this can create a lot of passion. And I gotta say, if you do not want to listen to complaining, this is not the episode for you, because basically what we did for this episode is we compiled a bunch of different athletic trainers' responses about the things that bug us. (laughs) You know what? I think this is a nice venue to just vent and let this stuff out, and I'm sure we have some stuff that will be very relatable to the professionals out there. And they'll probably listen to this and be like, man, that kind of bugs me too. And I got to say, if you're an athlete listening, you can decide what, well, now you're going to know one, how to press your athletic trainer's buttons. And two, that's a dangerous game. You know, at the end, we're going to be rating some excuses that some athletes have used for either not coming into rehab or not wearing their braces or anything. Oh, I can't wait. I think a specific scale needs to be made to rate (laughs) athlete excuses. So athletes don't get any ideas. Yeah, please don't make your (laughs) AT's job harder. If anything, take notes and avoid these pet peeves. Okay, I got to say, Randy, what do you think our top pet peeve was? And I bet you you can guess. It was it's one of mine. Well, now, well, now I'm I don't know, because the easiest one that I know that can I'm not kidding. This debate fuels so much arguments and passion, and that's how towels are folded. Okay, I actually didn't know that this was such a big thing. Yes, this is a big deal. I'm not as fiery as other people, but I like... Yes, you are. You were very fiery all weekend about how (laughs) towels are folded. That's all you talked about. But I'm not going to yell at people for folding (laughs) them wrong. I'm just going to shame them a little bit until they fold it my way. I didn't know this was a thing. Oh, yeah, it's a big deal. I, there were some people who were writing like hot dog, then hamburger or like hamburger, then hot dog. I can't say how I do it because I actually have to do it to figure it out. I can't remember off the top of my head. But essentially, I want the towel when I grab the towel that it unfolds to be used for a hot pack. If I have to refold it to use it for a hot pack, I'm doing that's way too much. To me, I would say that. It doesn't matter as much how it's folded as long as they're all folded the same way. Wrong. That was wrong. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so my biggest pet peeve is when I do not know what's going on, especially with schedule. For example, showing up to a place and then finding out that our basketball game has been canceled or moved to another day. Yeah. After you drive an hour to get to work, that is not exactly what you want to happen. No, exactly. I think that I think all athletic trainers would agree. I think all professionals would agree. We got this a lot. That when schedules don't line up, that's a big deal. I feel like you don't get this that often. Yeah, I really don't. I haven't had that issue. I guess the only thing closest to that would be when practices change, like with very short notice. Like all of a sudden, like, oh, well, tomorrow we're going at this time. Oh, well, great. Or tomorrow was supposed to be an off day and now it's not an off day. Oh, You know, I do know some athletic trainers instill like a 24 hour rule or a policy that they say, if I don't know this 24 hours in advance, then I'm not showing up. Uh, That's a good rule. Yeah. I mean, as long as you communicate that, then they can't hold you to that. No, exactly. It's all about work life balance. (laughs) All about work life balance (laughs) from it. And it goes back to the conversation we had with Julie. It does. Um, Actually, this goes along the same lines, but. Another pet peeve, people thinking I have unlimited availability. Oh, yes, I agree. I totally agree with that. And actually, Randy taught me this the other day. So we had a couple coaches who were texting late at night, and he's like, just don't answer them. Answer in the morning. You set your hours. You set your boundaries. And I was very proud of you, actually. Yeah, I see. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'll like if it's nine o'clock at night, they don't need the answer to my question. Right now, right now. No, we go to we actually go to bed really early. <laughs> yeah, they can they can wait. Now, I have had the situation where a coach texted me and said, oh, this person was attacked by a coyote. OK, oh that, that, that's a different I will I will respond to that one because it needs my immediate attention. But when a coach is asking a simple question about something, we can wait. Yeah, 
Yeah, emergency is always available. Everything else, give me my time. Yeah, give me my time. <laughs> so, I think one that I don't I don't get very often, but one that does bug me not maybe not as much as other people is when people look up what they think is wrong with them. Well, you don't get that? Not a lot. Really? And it doesn't it hasn't bothered me enough anymore to where cuz I just kind of blow it off. Like they'll be like, "Oh, I I think I got this." And I just say, "Okay." And I just keep doing my thing. So it, it, I just really totally ignore it. Like I will listen and take into account what they went through, but I put no stock in what they said they got. How often do you think that someone's internet diagnosis actually matches what they actually have? I think it depends on the service. Because if you look on WebMD, they'll probably say they have cancer. Everyone says they have cancer. So I would say statistically that one is way off. This one's good. So we actually got a... Uh, a story with this one so actually i didn't really explain we kind of changed the format up on you guys so normally what we do is um if you guys are new we ask for stories in our instagram stories and then people send us they dm us and then we ask if we can share them and usually we just go through those but this week we had a lot of question boxes that we just had people um populate answers in those so we took a lot of those and kind of condensed them and we made those all anonymous so um if you submitted one of those they might be on here But um, we still did receive DMs, so I tried to pair some of those DMs with some of these excuses and pet peeves that we got, and so we kind of have a mix of both today. You got creative on this one. Yeah. It also made it a lot easier on my (laughs) end instead of messaging like a thousand people. That's good. That is good. So this anonymous story, I had an athlete tell me that she knew she tore her labrum in her shoulder because her dad looked up a video on YouTube for a labrum test. I asked her. If he was some sort of healthcare professional, you know, just to give some benefit of the doubt. You know, sometimes like athletes have like, yeah, you never PTs know. Or doctors. That's or, true. And no, the dad worked at a bank. Uh, that's a little different. <laughs> that is a little different. Afterwards, we had her go to an ortho and he said that she had general shoulder weakness, especially in her rhomboids and external rotators. He did not suspect a tear, but we did have a good working relationship and he knew to discuss what labrum repair would mean for her season. And then like, which I was going to say, it has the hand waving, which means bye bye. bye. (laughs) He stressed coming in for exercises and stretching if needed. She managed to make it through her softball season with four sessions spaced out about bi-weekly. Nice. Four times. That's that's not a labrum. Yeah, that's (laughs) definitely not a labrum or this clinician's on it. Yeah. Yeah, that those are miracle hands right there. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, so another one we got was fake clearance notes. I can honestly say at least I've never gotten a fake clearance note. I actually kind of worry about that sometimes, but I don't think that we... You know what? Well, actually, that we didn't get any of this, but you know what really, really, really just makes me so annoyed? And I know it makes what, you annoyed what, too. What grinds your gears? <laughs> You know when you're looking at the physical and it says like only, oh, don't get me started an, on only this one. an MD and DO. I know. I know you know what I'm talking about. Oh, this one drives only me nuts. Only an MD or DO can sign this. What went through the PA's mind or the NP's or the MA? I've had that before. What went through their mind that they could sign where only a physician can sign? So like what went through, like I would never as an athletic trainer would never sign something that says only an MD or a DO can sign this because what kind of liability is that? So that, so that's the thing that gets me like on our physical form at the top and we've actually changed the form now because now it's going to say it on the top and the bottom. Ours says at every single place there's a signature. So it says. Only a uh, MD or DO can sign this form. And then where the signature spot is, it says signature of physician. I don't think that's a nurse practitioner. No. So. Like, I respect all these professions, but please do not have some sort well, of complex that you feel like you're all of a sudden an MD. Well, and that's the thing, too, is like, I don't care who actually does. Like, I get it. It's tough to, for some kids to find a place to do a physical yeah, and they need yeah. something affordable. I get it. But. If another person, like another professional does the physical, like a PA or something, like that's fine as long as the doctor signs off on it. Yes. I'm not going to be that picky where I'm like, no, the doctor has to do the physical. No, I'm not. I just want his signature. We just need the signature. Just follow the paper. Oh my gosh. Clearly fired up. So anyway, along the line of fake clearance notes, I was really hoping we were not going to get this, but Jose said 
that he got a fake COVID test. That's pretty bad. And I was like, wait, how? See, if I'm ever like questioning the legitimacy of like a note or something, I will look it up. Like I've had physicals where uh-huh. they have to put the stamp or like they put the address something. Oh, yeah, I've... you you like call and say, "Is this person MD?" Yeah, I'll yeah. look. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, big time. Yeah, we've done that before. So athletes, you won't get away with it. Anyway, so Jose said, "We do tests on site and we get those results directly. However, we do accept PCR tests from mass testing locations, which the same. That's what yeah. we do. In a group chat with the team and the coaches, this kid sent an identical screenshot." Of another athlete hoping I wouldn't notice. I told him we don't accept the results and he couldn't practice until we got an actual test. Get this. He ended up being positive and developed symptoms the next day. Of course he did. Of course he did. Yeah. I don't get it. I just <sighs> I just don't get it. No. I was like, that's what I was asking. Was it someone else's test? Or like, how do you fake a COVID test? Was it just old? No, it was someone else's. Of course it was. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So across all settings, I got to say this next pet peeve is a big one. Whether I'm, you're I'm looking at the, based or not. I was going to say, I'm looking at the overhead and it says non-compliance and no show. Thanks and for stealing my thunder. <laughs> I can tell that's going to irritate a lot of people. Yeah, we got this one a ton. So this, another anonymous story, actually. A college-level athlete refused to do rehab. She tried to go to her pediatrician at home for an ortho clearance note. When the pediatrician said no, she came to me wanting to go back to our ortho to get clearance without rehab. I said no. <laughs> I texted our ortho about it just in case, and he backed me up. He told me if she didn't show up, he would cast her instead of letting her use the boot since he didn't know the level of compliance. I've never had anyone casted because that's bad. That You know when the cast comes out, that's not a... You're not doing very, very good on your level of compliance. No. So she eventually came in two weeks later to do rehab after coach Doc and I talked to her and her parents about it. With all her non-compliance, it took an extra month to get her started back out on the court. Okay. If that is not a story, a, a testimony to why you need to come to rehab, like, come on that an extra month. That's a long time. It is a long time. That's the thing. Like it, I, it boggles my mind. Because athletes are always like, oh, I want to be back out there and air all this. But don't you realize the longer you wait or you're just not compliant or don't do things correctly, it takes longer to get you back. That's not what they're thinking. No, that is not what they're thinking. So I asked her what it ended up being. And she said it was a fibula stress fracture that was all the way through on the x-ray. Oh, man. It was a miracle that it wasn't displaced. She was also a volleyball player. So her stature was long, 6'1", and lanky which also means longer skinnier bones. We didn't end up having to cast her. I gave her a firm deadline to come in and do rehab, or after that, I was going to recommend casting. With coaches and dad's help, she came in before that deadline I gave. Okay, this this part. What's even more odd is that she came back, broke some school records, and then thanked me publicly later. Of course. Super awkward. I got cursed at and then thanked. Yeah, that's usually how it goes. (laughs) Really odd, but understandable. She was in that rebellious, finally free from my parents stage in life. Goes to show mental aspect of getting back on the court is just as important as rehab itself. Oh, absolutely. I love that we keep getting stories like this. Yes. I love that. She finally came in and really started trusting me when she went back out on the court and had no pain. It was a fight the entire time to keep her off the court in the out of the boot, but strictly walking phase. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. And you know what? That's the... That is the tough thing when athletes are like, they don't really have anything on them anymore, but they're really not ready to play, but they're just walking around. They're like, look, I feel fine. I'm like, because you're not doing sport yet. (laughs) You do dynamic things. It's going to hurt. Yeah. My favorite is when they try to show me something dynamic and it looks terrible. Like, no, 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 no. I'm good. Watch. And then they're hobbling around. I'm like, yeah, that looked great. Honestly, sometimes that's the best is you know what? You want to go back out there? Okay, you go back out there. And then they take themselves out. Yeah, that's true. Because then it's not you telling them. It's, okay, now we're on the same page. Okay, now let's do rehab. See, it looks like I wasn't wrong. <laughs> My job is literally to look forward and reduce the risk of problems. Yeah, seriously. It's not just a guessing game here. Actually, a lot of people also said they had a big pet peeve about being told how to do their job. Oh, Yeah. Yeah, by everyone, one, but yeah. everyone tries to do this. Oh, yeah, I, that drives honestly, me nuts. Honestly, I think this probably goes with all jobs. Oh, yeah, that drives me nuts. 
I think just anyone in general. But like, I don't tell the coaches how to do their job, especially when our team's losing. <laughs> All right. Like, I'm not telling them how to do their job. No. How about when you explain the injury to the athlete and they turn around and tell their teammate that they don't know what's wrong? Oh, that's my favorite. Like, I'll <laughs> go into this elaborate, like, I'm discussing it, and I try to make it very simple. Mm -hmm. You know, I do layman's terms and all that stuff. I use hands as symbols and, like, stuff like that. Coach walks in. Hey, what's wrong? I don't know. Dude, I just told you what's wrong. What do you mean you don't know? My favorite is, you know the story, when I told an athlete that he couldn't have ibuprofen after oh yeah after a concussion and he was like I, t I told him the whole reason why and then he turns around and he tells our head athletic trainer that i told him that taking ibuprofen will make his brain bleed there you go now he won't take ibuprofen i was like dude no <laughs> so i've actually gotten to it where i will call them out if they're like oh i don't know i'll be like yes you do i just told you <laughs> yes you do I love that. Oh, yeah. I'm not letting them slide. Okay, this one, I'm very surprised. I actually wrote this one in because of all the responses we got, we did not get a single person who said leaving the ice scoop in the machine, in the ice machine, was a pet peeve of theirs. I don't get it enough for it to bother me. Really? Because most of the time, I'm grabbing it. This drives me nuts. It drives me nuts because that thing is, oh, actually, you know what actually drives me more nuts? When I get to the ATR in the morning and no one dug out the ice. And so it's just all sitting up at the top. Uh, I get that. I hate that. And then I'm like, now the machine could have been making ice all, all night, but now we have to wait for it to make more ice because no one dug it out and just got stuck well, at the top. That really becomes irritating when you're in the summer months and you're banging through a lot of ice. Oh my god! Or the ice machine's not making as yeah, much ice as yeah. it should be. Yeah. Also, one pet peeve that is kind of off, to off topic but a little bit not on topic, not off topic, is um, when athletic trainers decide to play their um, absolute rule and decide that ice is the most horrible thing in the world. Like, you can decide that. However, you still need to have ice at games in case you have a heat exhaustion or you need to run a heat protocol or anything like that. And also, ice is still good to make drinks cold. So, like, not having ice out is just stupid plus also what you don't account for is where am i going to keep my lunch <laughs> yeah right your portable fridge like let's be honest when we bring out the ice chest and stuff i would say maybe 10 percent of that is for the athletes the rest of the 90 percent is for us yeah. keeps my beverage cold keeps my lunch nice and cool so this one specifically is wiping inside and outside of water jug with the same towel I could see that. I mean, that is kind of gross. I, that honestly is I never the thought reason. Of it. Really? I never thought of that. I purposefully don't do that. And I also purposefully do not drink out of the water jugs. I mean, that's probably a good idea. I am also a water snob. So that you makes are sense, a water snob. But I will not drink out of those. Disgusting. I also hate cleaning them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I hate cleaning the coolers. You guys, I don't think you understand how much I like. I do not do the dishes. I don't. I, I, I hate. I hate it. Yeah, I do the dishes in the house because I don't want to do laundry. I'll do the laundry. But I like doing the coolers is just I will See, do everything. I, I will do all the other grunt work, all of it. But just don't make me clean a cooler, See, please. The, cleaning the coolers is just it's just it's like a, a giant a, cup. It, it, you're right. It is a giant cup. But it's like it's just tedious and it's very labor intensive because you got to lift it and angle it and all that stuff i really hate cleaning out the cool the um ice chest because you know why there's always those last little pieces of ice that are impossible to get out and you're doing like and you're flip trying to flip it out and it keeps going back in and then i hate it i've never had to do that oh it drives me nuts okay we got another story so next pet peeve is oh, not also sorry and then when you're trying to clean it the lid's always falling closed and you're like oh i gotta keep the lid up and then oh it's a disaster <laughs> so our last pet peeve not telling me all what happened slash when the physician asks and the story changes oh of course that's why i will make sure i tell my team doc before the athlete <laughs> gets there so nicolette said i had one athlete tell me they fainted after running with their girlfriend but really, they fainted while getting a tattoo. 
and I only knew a month and a half later when I was sitting in the doctor's office with him for a prolonged concussion protocol and they finally came forward. He said it was wild getting a tattoo and I was like, wait, what? (laughs) Of course. I didn't care how he got hurt, but it was just funny that he felt like he had to lie. But it did make me feel better that he also told his mom the same excuse. Okay, well, that's good. (laughs) At least you're in the same category as mom. same category as mom. Yeah, I was just about to say that. So to finish out, I think that one of the biggest pet peeves athletic trainers have is when athletes make excuses. Yes. And, you know, some of them are clever. Some of them are funny. So. Sure. That's uh, all I have. No, you're going to think some of these are funny. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I'm ready. I figured that we could rate these excuses. Like what if an, okay, I'm going to be an athlete coming into you. What if I like the first one really simple. I didn't come to rehab today because I feel fine. No, because a lot of times when they say I feel fine, it's like, I I, I feel fine. I have like zero confidence in that answer. I'm like, no, you're not. They feel fine today. Well, what's my scale? What am I? How am I grading this? What do you mean? You get to decide. Well, that's no fun. Um, I guess we'll go off of a zero to 10 and I feel fine as a one. (laughs) Okay, that's a good scale. How about this one? I actually, actually, I'm not going to tell you how much I like or dislike this one. Okay. Excuse for not wearing a brace. I don't want the other team to know I'm hurt. That's a three. No, that one's a solid excuse. That's a solid excuse. No, it's not. The other team does not care. Yeah, no. The other team doesn't care. Sometimes they target that. They target your injured players. They target everybody. And if they see a brace, they'll target it. I was always taught to cover it. Oh, I understand, like, in the game. Oh, okay, I get it. Sorry, I was thinking, like, pre-game. Oh, no, like, no, no. Like, no, no, a, no. okay, I get it. I get it now. I'm sorry. Okay, re-rate. Still, like, a four or five. If really? Yeah, I'm not giving anything higher. I'm giving it a seven. I think that that's a passable. It's a C. This is all, the only reason that I'm uh, I'm very hesitant on this answer because it reminds me when I had I'm not kidding I had a coach ask me if one of her jumpers who's in a boot at this time <laughs> asked if she could practice without the boot and then just walk around with the boot. No, that defeats that the defeats the purpose for? of the boot. Yeah. Oh, actually, you said something that made re- made me remember a story. So one time I was working a basketball game and speaking of didn't want the other team to know I'm hurt. Well, this one girl who was like really like one of the team's best players, she was like showing off and she was like just, you know, pregame, everyone's super excited, whatever. And she saw a pull-up bar that was way too high. And so she climbed up to the pull-up bar and she starts doing these pull-ups, falls off the pull-up bar tears her acl doesn't get to play that sucks yeah other team that sucks that's terrible yeah it really sucked yep oh i'm sure coach was not very happy about that one no and i don't there's no excuse for that (laughs) how about this next excuse i didn't show up to rehab because i thought there were 100 minutes in an hour i don't i don't get that (laughs) one i don't that's like a two (laughs) i don't get it why does that how does that make a difference in like where you got to go? I don't get it. I I can see where they were trying to go with this. Like if, you know, you're supposed to meet at like 3.30 or something. Or maybe you're supposed to meet at 3 o'clock. Let's say 3 o'clock. And it was like 2.50. You thought you had another 50 minutes. I'm uh, not. Okay. I'm not, okay. I, I, see, I see what he means. Okay. Yeah. I'm not vouching for this person. (laughs) Please do not use this excuse. This one I think is really funny. Store-bought braces give me rashes. Only the braces out of the ATR don't give me rashes. That that one is pretty funny. I'll I'll give that one. That one's like a nine. I love it when we make the athletic training room better than CVS. (laughs) I appreciate that. You're right. Our braces are better. How many times have people lost your braces? That drives me nuts. Oh, I'm on them. I always make sure to tell them, oh, by the way, this is not yours. I'm oh, giving, yeah. After you're done with this, you got to bring it back. Oh, I'll tell them. I, and I will bug them every time I see them. I'm like, hey, you still have my brace. I write it down. Oh, yeah. We have a nice little spreadsheet that keeps track of 
who checked out what. Oh, nice. Oh, and I'll, every time I see him, I'm like, hey, I want my brace back. Okay, how about this one? The walking boot doesn't match my outfit. It's not meant to be stylish. <laughs> like, we got some that were like, it ruins my drip. <laughs> It's not meant to be stylish. No one wants, like, no. no. Get that out. No. I'm throwing that one out. Okay, what about um, they didn't come to treatment because it cuts into their nap time? I have no sympathy. <laughs> I get no nap time. Okay? Do you let your athletes nap in the ATR? Sometimes, yeah. Like, if, if I'm doing treatments and stuff, like, if I'm finishing off with, like, heat and stim or if I'm starting with that, I'll let them nap. That doesn't bother me. Yeah, it doesn't bother me either. And we do that too, but I just I I feel like there are some people who really hate it. And I we didn't get any any submissions that it was like their pet peeve or anything. But I do know like there are some athletic training rooms that are like smaller and so you don't really want people hanging around there. Oh, makes I, sense. I'm not like if they come in and like, "Hey, can I take a nap in here?" 9 times out of 10, I'm probably going to say no. If we're really slow, I think we have a nap. I think we have a table specifically for naps. Like if it's really slow and we're talking like finals week, and I understand that the students have been like, they've been getting crushed. I might make it okay because we'll probably work on something also. Like, okay, that's fine. Because they're probably coming in a little bit because they're doing some treatment. I'll be okay with it. But yeah, no, we're not, we're not designated nap time zone. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised they don't have that on college campus. Actually, if your college campus has a nap room, I want to know about it. I think there are some. There are some, I think. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I think. Fullerton did that somewhere. Really? Or like certain points of the year, like maybe close to finals, they had a napping area or something. That's nice. I remember the student union was open all night during finals week, so kids would just sleep in there. Oh, actually, yeah. Ours was too. Yeah. And so was our library. See, they know how college kids work. (laughs) Okay. This is my favorite of all time excuse, so I rate this one a 10. Not that I would accept it. I just think I would laugh too hard. I couldn't. Okay, let's see it. So Christian said, one of his athletes used the excuse, I thought the brace was similar to how long I ice for, so I threw it away after 20 minutes. What? (laughs) Why? What makes you think that they're the same thing? This is the same reason that you have to tell athletes not to shower with their ace bandage. I'm still just... My mind is blown. Like, why do you think I'm giving you this thing that's probably came out of a box that could just be thrown away? Yeah. So, going over all this made me think of another big pet peeve. Okay, do it. I, it absolutely drives me nuts when an athlete comes in and they're like, oh yeah, this has been hurting. And I ask, oh, how long? Oh, like two weeks. Like three weeks. Are you serious? (laughs) <laughs> you mean to tell me by week two? And it doesn't cost you anything to come over here. No! By week two or week one, you didn't think like, oh, this is kind of weird. I should get this looked at. No. Apparently not. Like, oh, I didn't, yeah. Oh, actually, one we didn't touch upon that I, I guess I just didn't write it down. How about when either the coaches or the athletes come in, they're like, oh, I th- I, I'm going to need this treatment today. Oh, yeah. the Like the ordering. We talked about that last episode. Oh, yeah, man. I'm not in and out, dude. Like, I will gladly take your input, but we're not ordering off the menu. I ha- I had this one patient who literally came up to me and told me that she was due for a peck release. Oh, no, she get out. She was due for a peck release. And I was like, oh, you are? Really? Get out. You need, I- to, you need to go to pay money to massage envy if you're looking for that not only did she come up to me with that confidence i have never met this patient before well now you have yeah wow i was very taken aback Ooh, good word thanks i like that do you have any more pet peeves (laughs) i think we've covered all all the things that really grind my gears do you have any excuses that athletes have made I feel like my athletes don't really make excuses. Yeah, I don't have a lot of excuses. They're, I like to think my, my kiddos are pretty upfront with me. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think it also goes down to personality too because there are some people who just, I mean, that's they have to justify things. I mean, I will, like, I'll be honest with them. Like, if, if they tell me something and I'm, like, the ones where they're like, oh, like, oh, two weeks, it lasted two weeks, I will be understanding, but then I'll I'll... At a certain point, I'll start the, 
okay, you know it's coming. And then I give him the disappointed dad talk. And then they go, I know. I'm like, yeah, let's not do that again. <laughs> so if you guys are new, these actually were all submitted from our Instagram followers and our listeners. So if you want to join in on sending in your own stories, normally we we do a lot more like credited stories or longer stories. Um, head over to our Instagram stories at AT Corner Podcast, and then you can also submit your own stories that we will possibly feature. And then also, if this makes you remember a story by listening to this episode, we do have a Facebook group called AT Corner Community that you can join. It's free. There's only one question to join. It's where did you hear about our podcast? And then you can join in with other listeners of the show, and then you can totally make a new post. It doesn't have to be a story. You can you can post whatever you want in there as long as it's athletic training related. Um, and then we always make episode threads so you can comment what your guys' pet peeves are for this week, some excuses that you've heard if you missed our Instagram story. And also, we do every other episode as education or stories. This one was a story episode. Next episode's education. And we're going to be talking about shoulder and scapula issues. So that'll be out next week. And I think that's all we have. I think that is all we have. It was a pretty short episode today. Really quick. Well, you know, you can only hold on to anger so much. Yeah, if you guys made it this far after just hearing us rant for a little while, I feel like ju- it's just a it's just a Monday rant today. I feel like starting starting your uh, your morning <laughs> with an episode of Pet Peeves, you're going to come into your athletic training room fired up. So I feel bad for the kiddos that are going to try and pull an excuse when you're listening to this episode. Yeah, let us know if they do. <laughs> oh man, the easy way to get kicked out of the athletic training room real quick. All right, you guys. Thank you for helping us showcase athletic training behind the tape. Bye.